Well, hello, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me on A Sister's Trust. Today, we have a special guest with us today. Her name is Demetra Driscoll, and she's a waiver support coordinator for the area, really helping people who have a disability. But before we get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel so that you can hear different and exciting news that we have for the area. One of my goals is to bring different women on and just really share about the experience, you know, following God, having different trials and things that they help people in the community and really loving people. So I thought about my friend, which, you know, I didn't mention that she is a friend of mine, so I do know her personally. And what I think about, especially with this type of job, you have to have patience. So I'm going to read you a scripture about patience. And you're going to find that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with passions and desires. And I'm thinking about this type of job that she have. You have to have a lot of patience. You have to be a person that's loving. You got to think about joy. You have to be a person that was willing to put other people first. And so I really see this in her life. So I asked her to come on here. And I'm thankful that she took time out of her day to be with us. So welcome, Demetra. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes, yes. So glad, to be, glad to be here. I'm glad to have you here. So yeah. what I want you to do is just to take a little bit of time and just really tell us what you do and, you know, um, a few things that stand out in your job, you know, for what you're trying to do for the people. Okay. Okay. So um, my official title is I'm a waiver support coordinator. Okay. Um, it is uh, in the area of social services. My undergrad is in psychology. I've worked in social services a uh, little over 20 years now. I've been working with uh, individuals that have a disability for the past seven years. Um, I'm a solo contractor, independent contractor rather, with the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. Um, so basically what I do is I coordinate services uh, via APD, Agency for Persons with Disabilities, uh, coordinate services. Uh, what that is is putting uh, persons in place to assist individuals that have a disability in the community uh, to assist them with their day-to-day -day life so that they will be able to, you know, live uh, indep as, as independently as they can in the community uh, of their choice. So that's one of the aspects of my job is uh, coordinating the services for them. I'm also an advocate for them. Um, I'm the go-between between the agency for persons with disability and the families or the consumers. Um, I'm kind of like the, um, I describe it to my consumers as the uh, coach of the team. I bring everybody together. They're actually, the, they're the captain. They, uh, they, they steer it, the consumers. The consumers are the clients. Those are the individuals that actually have the disability. So um, I make sure that whatever they need, um, uh, that, the, that the Agency for Persons with Disabilities through the iBudget waiver program, which is actually Medicaid funded money, federal and state money coming together, and it's called the iBudget waiver. So that is the Medicaid uh, funds that our federal and state government allocates uh, for the state of Florida in order to assist our individuals that have a disability. So um, that's uh, a little bit of what I do. <laughs> okay, okay. So yes. what made you get in this field? Like what was your desire that drove, you know, um, drove you to do this type of this type, this of, type of work. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, social services in general. I think um, uh, when I was up at uh, uh, Florida and I actually started out as a pharmacy major. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do, did not uh, realize that there was a whole lot of chemistry involved. And I was like, nope, that's not me. Um, so I really started, uh, I, I prayed about it. I asked God, you know, what is it that I really want to do if you know if i am to get a degree in psychology what is it that i want what do i want to, and um 
in my heart, I knew it was to help people. Okay. okay? And whatever um, aspect uh, that I could with my degree, I knew that on my day-to-day -day basis, as far as my profession was concerned, mm -hmm. that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted um, uh, to, to assist people. So I worked in a lot of areas of social services with juveniles, with the Department of Juvenile Justice. I've worked with uh, the little bitty ones at the Head Start programs, the three to four, three-year-olds rather, um, with the Department of Children and Family um, in their uh, um, uh, family builders program, um, providing therapy to families that they, they were at risk of their families being removed. But this opportunity to work with individuals that were disabled, it came to me while I was kind of in between jobs and I was uh, a, a um, substitute school teacher. Oh. And I had gone out of social services, actually into the legal field when I first came to Jacksonville and worked as a paralegal for some years and was getting very burnt out with that. <laughs> so I decided to go back in my field and do what I felt I was called to do professionally. So while I was substitute teaching, um, I ran into a woman that her, her husband actually owned an agency and his agency was contracted with the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. So that's when I first found out uh, that that was even possible. So I worked through an agency for two and a half years and I told the owner at that time that I knew at some point that I wanted to, um, you know, be self-employed right. and uh, because by that time I had been so many years in social services that I felt that, you know, that I could, um, if I could contract with someone that I wanted to go that route instead of continuing to work for someone. So about five years ago, that's what I did. I contracted myself uh, with uh, the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, so I've been doing it ever since. And um, it's 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 a lot, just like any position in social services is, because you really feel the responsibility uh, of the people that you that you take care of, that you care for. You carry the weight; you are responsible for them. And I don't take that lightly. And um, so, you know, it can be stressful. So. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, to say the least. Uh, but, you know, but the reward as far as, you know, um, assisting the, the individuals that have the disabilities that come, the reward that comes along with it, you know, it, it's definitely worth it. So I, I enjoy them. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, you know, what was your most challenging case that you ever had to do? Like, mm. a challenging example. I mean, we don't have to have names, but like, right. the most challenging Wow. You know, um, gosh, I deal with, um, I deal with, with individuals, the, the individuals themselves have a mental or a physical disability, and some of them even have mental disorders. So they're dually diagnosed, right? Um, and in addition to that, some of them, uh, uh, and a lot of them have major medical issues. So you have three different things going on, diagnoses, and a lot of times it's more than three diagnoses It's going on. Um, and in addition to that, you could have a person that is a forensic case, which means they're in the, um, they're, uh, in the judicial system. Okay. Um, and I have had that situation <laughs> where a person with, and, and it's kind of weird because people don't think that people that have a disability actually goes out and, you know, could do something like commit a crime, crime in the community. Okay. It happens. Um, sometimes those can be the most difficult cases because of the intellectual uh, disability. They may have an intellectual disability. However, it's, it's high enough to where, you know, they are cognizant enough of, you know, the fact that they can actually go out and do some things in the community that are not quite good. And um, so that becomes challenging because now you have to not only deal with the person, their disability, maybe their mental disorder, maybe their medical issue, but on top of that, you may have to deal with the, uh, the judicial system as far as helping them to navigate through that. I've had individuals actually on probation. Really? Before. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah. you need to, so when you um, assess them, that means you bring in people that's going to help them in those areas. Is that what you're doing or is that where you're? excuse me, your expertise come in being in social, you know, um, what is it, social work or, you know, being able to assess them yourself or where does right. that work? Right. Uh, 
So yes, so my my expertise in you know in social services um, having have worked with uh, a vast array of individuals from three year old all the way up to you know sixty five seventy. Uh, 70 years old and also too I have a legal background as far as being a, um, a paralegal so all of that comes into play mm -hmm. uh, when you're dealing with the individuals because um, the 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 Medicaid money or the I budget what it does is it pays for the services for the individual okay right uh, like say if the individual wants to stay um, in their own apartment or home in the community and they could have a mental disorder or, and or a physical disorder um, but in the state of Florida as in most states you have the right to live where you want to live so I could have an individual that has decided they want to stay in the community could be by themselves could be with a family member or roommate or whatever so my position and my job is to make sure that they get the individuals in the home that's going to make that happen whether if they need a what we call a personal sports provider or a supported living coach that will actually come to the home and physically help that person with whatever they need help with um, i'm responsible for helping them to create goals uh, whatever that goal is it could be a simple goal as in learning how to cook they live out in the community and um you know maybe they have some physical disabilities that kind of um, uh, you know, makes that a little tricky as far as cooking is concerned. I help find the direct care provider that we call them that can actually come into the home and spend that time with the person that has the disability to help teach them how to cook. So that's just one example. Uh, each individual, of course, we're all individuals, so we have our own individuals. Uh, uh, goals and that is the same with individuals that have disabilities so it's whatever their goals are it could be they want to go back to college I've had individuals that say hey I want to go back to college and get my degree and my position is okay let's do it let's figure this out how we're going to you know make that work for you and who we're going to uh, have to assist you with that goal okay so mm -hmm. when you say like um, like you know somebody might come in to help them cook or something do mm -hmm. they have to have a special license to do that to work with your agency or do they just contact you and say you know um i have this this time i could give mm -hmm. them they, you know how they're trying to find a job but they know how to cook or they have experience if they do mm -hmm. a special license to do that right yes um all the all of the individuals that come in including myself that come in and work with the in, uh, the individuals with the disability, uh, they have to go through uh, the Agency for Persons with Disability and actually become a certified provider okay. through APD, right? In order to uh, in order to get paid for your service, my service is as a waiver support coordinate. I coordinate the services and the providers, and you know I put all all of it together for you know, the, the benefit of the, of the uh, consumer. Right. There's a lot of different types of providers. We even have uh, uh, people that are dentists. Some dentists, uh, they, they're providers. They provide, well, as of last year, not, not anymore. They're, they're paid directly through Medicaid now. But as of last year, we had uh, dental providers. You have some people that are physical therapists uh, or therapists, uh, personal sports providers, supported living coaches, um, um, some individuals that provide community inclusion um, uh, or life skills development or we have individuals that uh, run adult day training programs and we call it ADT we have some individuals that run group homes okay. that they it's 24-hour uh, care for the individual and they've made the decision to live in a group home and if they make that decision to do so then one of their uh, services that are paid for through uh, I budget or Medicaid uh, is to pay that group home provider okay. to provide the care. Yes, but all depending on what your area is, whether you're a coordinator, a dentist, personal sports provider, whatever your area is that you provide the service, that will determine, of course, your educational uh, level and, but everybody has to be certified in order to get paid through Medicaid, that is all of us have to be certified through um as as a provider through the agency for persons with disabilities okay so 
knowing that they have to get those special licenses to be able to get paid through Medicaid. Mm -hmm. um, so they get the license, and then can they contact you directly, or do, is it a, like a chain of command? Do, do they get to you to get a job, or do you interview the people yourself for your clients? Well, I, I'm a provider myself, so I get all of my clients through the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. Um, every in the state of Florida, we have area offices. I'm located in Jacksonville, so our, our area here is Area 4, and it is in Jacksonville, Florida. There's another area office, say, in Daytona Beach. There's another one in uh, the Lakeland area. There's another one in Orlando. All of these are area offices. Anyone that, including myself, that wants to be a provider that provide the services, they would go to apdcares.org okay. on that website, apdcares.org, and they will go to that website, and it gives you all of the information, the step-by-step -step process that you have to go uh, through in order to become a provider with APD. I, I'm considered a solo provider. I work alone as a, I contract uh, contract directly with the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, which is what all providers uh, do. Um, yes, and and some individuals uh, they're not. You have solo providers, and then you also have ones that decide to open an agency, and say have an agency of wave support coordinators or an agency of other direct care providers. Um, so, but that's that's each individual's prerogative. I have uh, chosen to stay a solo provider for uh, <laughs> for over uh, five years. Okay, and that's yes. what I mean, because I know that you coordinate and you take care of the needs of your customers. Um, and that's why I was wondering, like, like we were talking about the person that needs to learn how to cook. So mm -hmm. When these people go through these agencies and then they're able to present to you Hey, I'm the person that learned, you know, I'm, I can teach them how to cook. Mm -hmm. You're coordinating. That's why I'm wondering, are you like um, interviewing them to say, okay, this person would be a good fit for my customer? Right. You know, the, um, so I interview them after they've gone through the district or the area office, after they've become certified right. uh, or licensed as a direct care provider. Once APD says, uh, yes, you know, they've done a, a contract with APD saying that they will be a direct care provider, you know, whatever service they're going to provide. After that, uh, with the coordinators, we're after the district level, the coordinators are the first point of contact. The district may give me a call. That's where I get all my clients from. The district will give me a call and say, I have a consumer that, you know, just got on the waiver, or it could be a person that moved, say, from South Florida and they moved to North Florida and they're on the waiver because you can trans the services transfer throughout the state of Florida. If the person moves, they don't have to stay within a certain area. Now, if they move out of the state, that's something different. They have to apply within that state. But if they stay within the state of Florida, the services can transfer. So it once the once they uh, go through the district, the provider, uh, direct uh, direct care providers, and they are certified through APD, um, then it is my job. There's on the website, uh, I can see a list of all providers in the state of Florida and specifically within my area, area four, Duval County, right? And the surrounding counties. Okay. So I have direct care providers that I work with on a frequent basis because we've worked together for years and I know what they do and they make my job easier <laughs> because they do a good job, right? <laughs> They do a good job that makes my job easier because if they don't do a good job, I hear from the consumer, I'm the point of contact, right? Okay. So the consumer will call me, the parent will call me, the legal representative will call me, the district will call me and say, hey, you know, Ms. Ms. Driscoll, can you see what's going on here? So, but, um, but yeah, so, I, you know, if, I, if, so I see, I do seek out the providers. I okay. seek them out according to what the needs of the consumer is. Right, right. I help them find the providers. I go to the home and assess the situation and see what their goals are and according to what they say they want to accomplish then i actually give them a recommendation uh, and they actually interview the providers the consumer themselves or their legal okay. representative okay. you know they interview the providers and they decide who they want to work with them they hire the providers well let me ask you this because i hear mm -hmm. that so they they do all this hiring but are you the one supposed to let them go 
or do they let them go to they sell? The consumer can also let them go. Okay. They can hire them. They can also fire them. In addition to that, the providers themselves, if it's not working out, if it's not a good fit, the direct direct care provider is saying, um, you know, all I mean, all kinds of I get all types of scenarios, you know, <laughs> okay. Okay. and they're and they basically say that it's not working out. Okay. with this particular consumer it's not a you know the personalities you know the consumer and the direct care providers the personalities are off they're just not gelling well okay. um the provider can also give a 30-day notice to myself and the consumer saying that we no longer want to continue services so then it's my position to help that consumer find another provider in that provider that they let go to place okay All right. yeah Yep. So the consumer basically, um, you know, it, it's it's their life. You know, it's their um, they're receiving this this these funds from Medicaid. So they basically get to decide what to do with it, who they want. They have the right to work with whomever they want to. They don't have to work with me. They can, you know, they can release me because I'm considered a provider. They can release me and find another coordinator that they feel, you know, is uh, doing the job better or will do the job better yeah. or whatever, you know, and that, and that does, it does happen. Mm -hmm. You so know, how about, um, so Ron, about how many um, clients are you taking care of? <laughs> so the, down or? It, it goes up and down. Um, in the state of Florida, if you're a solo provider, per individual myself i can carry up to 42 individuals okay full cases right but that is a lot of cases uh, uh, right now i have about 34 cases which is still a lot <laughs> because yeah yeah you can see what you have to think about it well how i see it as a coordinator is that i'm helping those individuals to basically manage every aspect of their life uh, I mean, every aspect of their life. <laughs> so it's it's a lot. So the individual themselves uh, has to determine, um, you know, how many cases they can handle. I, I, you know, and that's up to the individual. I'm a person, I do it full time. Um, there are some individuals that do it part time. They may have another profession and then they're a waiver support coordinator that they do part time. I made the decision to do it full time. So I carry a very high caseload because of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah, you can carry up to 42. And you say you have 34? 34 right now, and that can go up and down depending. Yeah. I've had individuals over this past year that moved out of my county. Mm -hmm. They moved to South Florida, they moved to uh, uh, South Carolina. I've had uh, individuals that uh, passed away uh, for whatever reasons. Um, I've had individuals to go to jail. <laughs> I mean, I've had, you know, you get the gamut. Yeah, you get the gamut. Uh, yeah. So it just depends. And so, and so that, yeah, your income, go, your income goes up and down, your caseload goes up and down because it is um, uh, uh, service driven. As long as I'm providing the service uh, for that individual, then um, I bill through Medicaid. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that sounds interesting. I mean, it sounds like it. I mean, even when today, I mean, you was running around and meeting needs and like, you don't know when emergency is going to happen. Yeah. What about, what about uh, when do you get time to have like a personal life for, for Demetra Driscoll? Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I have to. Yeah. I, I have, uh, just like, okay, social services is one of those fields where, and just like teaching, you know, you get very involved in the individual's life. When things happen in their life, it's almost like it happened to you. Right. You know, right. I've had nights where I've had sleepless nights because I was concerned about an individual. They got arrested or they're in they're in the hospital or you know something happened. There was a I had a situation where one of my consumers got it was a domestic violence situation and uh, got called I, and that's the other thing I'm on call 24/7. Um, and so I could get a call in the middle of the night from a police officer or from a hospital that says somebody was in Baker Act or somebody's been arrested. So as far as making time for myself, what's that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I've, I've been in it long enough. 
to where I know that I have to make time for myself. Because if I'm not, if I'm not good, if Demetra is not good, right? right I'm not going to be any good for my clients. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to shut down at a certain point, although I'm on call. Um, uh, and I, and I, and I'm one of those coordinators that I, I answer the phone, um, you know, because anything could be going on. So I'm going to answer the phone, but as far as a day to day work day, <laughs> it always changes. Like today I was late coming to speak to you because I got a call saying one of my clients was on, um, life support. Um, yeah. that's not how I planned on spending my day today. Right. But that's the kind of interesting part of the job is no day is ever the same. <laughs> right. right. So I had to run out to Orange Park um, 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 Medical Center and, you know, and check on that person and see what's going on there. Uh, but yeah, I, I have to, I just have to shut down basically at a certain time every day. I said, okay, if nothing, no emergencies are going on, mm -hmm. you know, it's time for me to shut down. And um, I've learned how to take care of myself. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, because I'm thinking about, you know, going on vacation, and you know, sometimes I want you to go vacation with me, your friend, but um, do you, yes. do that mean you get like a, uh, I, I want to say a substitute, I don't know, when, like when teachers get substitutes, people that's going to take their spots, do you have like a list of people you can call so you can have some time to really shut down and let your mind, you know, just, you know, you know, everything's going to be taken care of while you're gone. Yes, yes. Uh, in order for me to contract with APD, uh, one of the things in my management uh, plan um, is that I have to list two coordinators, two backup coordinators, in case, you know, God forbid, you know, I'm ever sick and I just can't deal with my consumers or, or I'm on vacation or whatever it is. I have two individuals that I have a very good working relationship with that I plan with them ahead of time if I know, like say for vacation, that I'm going to be gone for a week or two, um, that I can give them access to everything that I have as far as my files and everything online that I have to deal with. Um, I can call one or both of them and uh you know plan and let them know and then i have to let my consumers know as well that you know i'm on vacation don't call me this <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm just you know i'm just so glad that you gave a chance to you know um to share what you do um you know being a working woman wearing all these different hats taking care of people having your own family you know um kids and grandkids and um kids that's in college um yeah there's a lot going on it's not just taking care of yourself you're taking care of people outside of your family you know yeah. a lot of people are excited about when they get the 18 year old out of the house you done <laughs> took on something where you done took on more than just the 18 or you done took on the whole family because our right. family, it is like a family for you because you have to take care of you have to know the ins and outs of the yes personality what their needs are and more than I would imagine just the um, clients also if they're with parents or they have parents learning who those people are so you didn't just leave one village you actually added a whole bunch of villages you know so yes I think that's why I thought it was appropriate for you mm -hmm. to use the word patient and really share that scripture for you because you have to have patience yeah. and you have to um you know, a lot, I, know, I realize a lot of people take jobs that they really don't consider what they're getting into, and, and it could be from a money aspect of it, um, and then they don't do it well. But I think after a period of time, it mm -hmm. will show that from, you know, the way that they run a business or run a job or run their um, way that they treat people that mm -hmm. they show up. You know, and so yes. you have to get that and enjoy and not say, well, I'm planning to retire in like two years or, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't hear any of that. You know, you talked about, you know, really taking care of the person, taking care of the needs and um, not that you get tired of that, you know. And I think it's important to get in something that, that you really love and that you can really, con con you know, contribute to right. what you're doing. And so you are a person that really using what you went to school for. And so, you know, and you have to, you know, um, be able to have a peace about it. Mm -hmm. And the nice is bad knowing that, okay, it's not the end of the world and that, you know, you would, that's your calling, you know, because everybody's not called to do a yes. job. And so that's, yes, you know, your endurance in that will, you know, that really shows 
what mm-hmm. you're called to do because you want to enhance and make it always make it better. So yes. I appreciate you coming on here with us on a sister's trust. And we want to have Demetra back again. I heard she's gonna be going to Africa. Yeah. A lot of I, Africa getting shots and all that. That's not <laughs> there right now. Yes. Came, but I'm gonna be we're gonna we're gonna catch up with, with Demetra and she's gonna mm-hmm. share her trip with us, what she learned and I'm excited about it. I'm excited because also that's a desire and dream of hers. It's yes. actually getting, you know, getting a chance to do it. And that's another thing as women, mm-hmm. I want us to start dreaming a little bit. Dream again. Mm-hmm. It's never too late to dream. Right. I want none of us to be in that boat of shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? Yes. Write the actions, write the plan out. See how you can work that plan. Get yes. help with the plan. Get friends in your life. It's very important. Get yes. friends in your life. And if you mm-hmm. rejoice in the Lord always, mm-hmm. he'll make a way and he'll let you know. Sometimes it'd be yes, mm-hmm. sometimes it's no, mm-hmm. sometimes it's not right now, and sometimes you just have to wait. Right. Okay? So yes. think about it and, and you know, go for your destiny and your dream. Yes. You know, had a dream, she's living a dream, she's still mm-hmm. taking vacations, and she's still, you know, the, the coolest thing about that, she is supporting herself. This is a job that she, you know, she don't have a boss, you know, pretty much. I mean, it's a plan that she had to put together and she's mm-hmm. working her plan and she's taking care of herself. And that's why I, I admire too as a woman, being able to take care of yourself. And if you have a partner, that's mm-hmm. a benefit, right? And if right. you have a partner, you still can do it. And that's what, and that's what encourages Absolutely. me. Right. So Absolutely. That, that the partner is the like icing cake, but without mm-hmm. the icing, that the batter and everything still could be baked, right? And you can That's still, right. Yeah, you got to be able to do it. So guys, just get out there, women, you know, encourage one another, be in each other's lives, mm-hmm. um, pray together, whatever right. it takes to go. You know, friends, right. I mean, we've been friends for a long time. We don't live yes. in the city, but when we get together, it's like you hadn't really missed a step. Exactly. You need good friends in your life. And I thank you so much, Demetra, for your life and yes. your dedication and, and just really sharing with us and yes. the peace about what you have. Yes. Very can I say person. can I say one more thing to you before you go? You said something about uh women dreaming, right? Mm-hmm. Never too late to dream. You know, and I consider myself I'm a woman of a particular age now, right? So <laughs> My, my daughter thinks it fu- it's funny when I say that because, uh, you know, it was just yesterday, you know, I was 25, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. But, uh, but no, now I'm a woman of a particular age, but we tend to think that, um, you know, when we get to this age, at middle age, you know, that, uh, you know, that's it. Well, for me, and I would like to encourage other women, no, that is not it. <laughs> you know, we got a lot left to do you know, that God has for us. I have, I'm an empty nester now. You mentioned my, my children, all of them are young adults now. My youngest just turned 20 on the 12th of this month. I can't believe I have a 20 year old um, as my youngest child, right? But my oldest child is 30 years old and then 23 uh, in the middle. But uh, it's interesting because right now at this stage in my life, okay, I'm, you know, now that I'm past that that part that God had me to do was to raise and rear my children, right? So I'm past that stage. Now I'm in a different stage and I'm dreaming more than ever now. There is so much that I still want to do uh, and that I'm going to do. So one of the things I'm going to do over the Christmas holidays when I'm with all of my children, I'm going to, well, I have my, my oldest son, he does this anyway, but I'm going to encourage them as I'm going to do. And that is to write out on paper, my one year goal, and then my five year plan of what I would like to see happen um, over these next five years. Cause I got, I have, although I'm a woman of a particular age, I have a lot that I want to do still. So I am still dreaming. Um, and so I would encourage women to continue to dream and you know, write it out so you can see that thing on a daily basis, you know, pray about it and then just go for it because I feel we have nothing to lose, you know, God bless you. My father used to say, every time God wakes you up and you have another, you have another opportunity. Every time he wakes you up and you have a breath of life in you, that's God giving you another opportunity. And so, that is so true. That is yes, so true. yes, yes, yes. yes. No, to, to piggyback on that, Mm-hmm. nothing can happen you dream is your dream is your yes. desire nobody yes. can stop you but you right don't worry about what everybody thinks but you can always ask for advice 
And right. if you have a changeable heart, if it's not working, tweak mm -hmm. it a little bit, see what other people done before. A lot of things we don't really have to reinvent the wheel, right? Right. To get that wheel traveling, mm -hmm. you know, and skip some of those things that mistakes that other people made and have a jump on it, but mm -hmm. do it. And then if you don't like it, change it. It's your dream. That's right. And so just um just don't be satisfied with just living. Now, those of us who mm -hmm. just want to live, that's fine too. But if you got a dream, go for it. And if it don't work, at least you tried. That's right. So anyway, I'm gonna end up in this right about now. And don't forget to subscribe. Please share um, with your friends because we really want to build it. We want to have different speakers on here. We're gonna have a little bit of shopping, a little bit of cooking. Um, <laughs> just, just a lot of things we got planned. So anyway, you guys, thank you again for joining us on a. Um, a, a oh my goodness, I messed this up. But thank you again for joining us on a sister's trust. And Demetra, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I enjoy it. I always love talking to you. Okay. Well, yes. Y'all have a great rest of the day, and I'll see okay. you next time. Thank okay, you. absolutely. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>